So you got one of these. And you wanna to learn to set it up right. So you can take this to take a picture of that. All right, so let's go over some of the things you're gonna need. Of course, you're gonna need the new scope that you just got for Christmas, hint, hint. Or maybe it's been in the, uh, in the closet and you don't know what to do with it, but an equatorial mounted telescope. And the other thing that you're gonna need is an eyepiece. Uh, and if your scope came with like a nine millimeter or a 12 millimeter eyepiece, then chunk them. You need a good 20, or in this case, uh, a nice 32 millimeter wide angle eyepiece. The other thing that you're gonna need is a foam bracket. And I'll leave a link to the description uh, for this one that I have. It's basically a three or a three, it's a two. Is this a two or a three? It's a, th it's a two and a half axis foam bracket that actually mounts to your eyepiece and then holds your phone. And I mean, you need a phone, preferably one that has a pro mode in the, um, the phone settings so that you can adjust the aperture, the ISO, ISO, is it ISO? And um, shutter speed, that kind of thing. You really need to have that control. You know what else you need? It's earbuds. Yeah, really, earbuds. But not these earbuds, because they suck. But if you have a pair of earbuds that actually have a volume control on this little doodad here, not like these. When you plug it into the phone, the volume down will actually activate the shutter and you don't have to touch the phone. But these are useless. All right, so let's talk about the basic setup of an equatorial telescope. The first thing you wanna do is get your tripod without the mount, without the OTA, the tripod just set up and it should separate right here. The thing to do is to get this thing pointed north, pointed towards Polaris or the magnetic north. And you can use a phone app like I've got to actually help assist you getting your tripod pointed north. Step two would be to level your tripod. Uh, it's not critical, but it is uh, needed to have a good level foundation for the mount and the OTA. So take some time, get a little small level like I've got here and uh, level up your tripod. Step three would be to put the mount onto the tripod. Screw it fast, make sure it's nice and tight and that your little eyepiece tray on the bottom is good and tight and you wanna keep tightening, tightening it up until the legs spread completely out. I made the mistake early on of not doing that and uh, everything would kind of shift through the night. So you wanna make sure that your legs are spread out as far as, as the manufacturer has made the tripod to be able to, to uh, spread out. Now that you've got your mount on, most mounts come with a small bubble level and this is something that you wanna key in on and look at to adjust or do some fine uh, leveling after you've got everything put together because that those little bubble levels will really help you out so get your tripod uh, leveled first and let the bubble level in the mount actually help you fine tune that all right step three is going to be putting the ota on and now balancing balance is crucial because you don't want if you're running this thing with your manual cables or like little motors like i have you don't want them overworking or you don't want to release the clutch to move your telescope and the thing falls on you that's that's bad you want to be able to release those clutches to move it and adjust it 
and have it pretty much stay put. So balance is key. So take the time to balance it in both the right ascension and declination. Okay, now that everything has been leveled and balanced, here's the critical point and the more sciencey part of it. You wanna make sure that your scope is at the right tilt. And by tilt, I mean this axis of your scope, which is your right ascension axis, needs to be in line as close as you can to the Earth's axis. Yeah, to the Earth. That allows you to slew around find the moon or whatever it is you want to shoot, lock your declination axis, and then all you have to do now is track. If you don't know what your latitude is, it's real easy. Go onto your uh, Google Maps on your phone, long pressure location, and your latitude will come up. My latitude here in Central Florida is 28 degrees. That means that I'm 28 degrees above the equator at zero degrees but I'm not at 90 degrees because I'm not in the North Pole. And that's critical because that tells you how high to point your telescope. Folks up in Canada, they're at like 50 degrees, 43 degrees, you're gonna notice that their telescopes are pointed much higher because they're trying to match the axis of the Earth. All right, so let's talk about how we're gonna take this bracket, this phone, and this eyepiece and put them all together. First of all, the bracket should have a little hole like this. Eyepiece needs to go in first, and because I'm using using this wide angle, you know, I want to get that uh, basically flush, and then you're tightening up like so. Okay, and I recommend, you know, the moon's out at night, but guess what? You can shoot the moon in the daylight. It actually produces some really good images, believe it or not. So the phone needs to slide in, and I would recommend that you do this in the daylight so that you can actually see what you're doing. All right, so now that we've got the phone over uh, or in the bracket, we want to turn on our camera. We need to slide the phone down. That's why it's easy to do it at night, or excuse me, at night, in the daylight, because now I can, I'm looking through my eyepiece. You see that? Because if I don't do that, if I'm trying to do this in the dark, you know what you're going to see? Dark. So we tighten it up. So now we know when we go over to the telescope and we slip this in, we should be, we just make a few little adjustments back and forth and we're good. All right, let's go put it in the eyepiece and see what we can see. So what do we see? We see nothing. Um, that's okay, because what we want to do is we want to get this thing over to the moon and get it lined up. Uh, but one thing I want to show you here on my phone, I have more and you want to go into pro mode. And now look at that. Now I can adjust the, um, the aperture, or actually this is the shutter speed. So you want, you're probably going to want to turn that shutter speed down. I can also adjust the ISO because uh, this is some functionalities that you really, really need. And I have the focus on manual focus. I don't want it on autofocus because I don't want it focusing in and out trying to find focus. Uh, so I have the focus set to manual and I do my focusing on the actual knob for the focuser of the telescope. All right, so now let's get this thing pointed at the moon. The moon's almost straight up. So I'm gonna unlock both axes. I'm gonna roll it around. I'm gonna tilt it up. And I'm actually going to get down here behind it. And the first method is getting it lined up. Look, almost straight up and down. So once we have that, we officially have to turn our hat around backwards, okay? And that is the official astro look. So I want you to know how badass I am because this thing is pointed right at the freaking moon. Like, that is two years of toil and sweat and tears and no sleep and thousands of dollars spent, all led to me being able to point this telescope first time. All right. Okay, so I'm looking through the, um, the finder scope. And for those of you out there using a stock finder scope that comes straight out the back and you're doing this and you're in your late 40s like I am and your knees are shaking, invest in a right angle finder scope. Come on people, seriously. You see how easy this is? All right, so the scope's in. Now, 
My telescope has some upgrades. I've upgraded, um, I've taken the knobs off and I've upgraded the right ascension and declination. I have little tracking motors, but you don't need those, trust me. All you gotta do is just get in the line and once you do that, you, all you have to do is turn the right ascension knob just a little bit to keep the moon in the field of view. But guess what, I'm gonna turn my motors on. All right, so we're close. I'm using my little motors here to just kind of motor the moon into the field of view. And you can see that we're gonna have to make some final whoop, phone adjustments. Just slide it up. Make sure you leave those tension brackets kind of loose. So the first key is getting the moon somewhat in the field of view, right like that. And then you can literally pinch and zoom. And you just wanna keep working See, we've zoomed in, but you just want to keep working the moon. That spot right there. So we got now, we've got most of the field of view. And it takes a little finessing to, and look at that. I've got my phone set on some sort of weird thing where it actually activated the shutter and took a picture. But we're just moving the moon into the field of view. You, if you didn't have these little tracking motor upgrades, you'd be doing this with the knobs. And now we're gonna adjust our focus, and there's the moon. So what's really cool about the pro mode is we can reduce our ISO, and we can change our shutter speed, and we can zoom in. We can adjust our focus on the te telescope itself. And watch this, picture, let's check it out. What do you think? First picture, right out of the gate. So the reason that it's best to take a picture of the moon during this phase when it's uh, like a half full like this is you see this terminator line right here and it really gives you some good contrast um, on the craters. I feel like we still need to adjust our focus just a little bit. So you can really use that phone to zoom in and of course it's gonna be super shaky. That's to be expected. So adjust our shutter speed, make it a little brighter. And as the night goes on, I mean, we're shooting at uh, six o'clock in the evening. We still got a lot of sunlight out and we're taking pictures of the moon. But the cool thing you do is come over here, go back, go into video. Like that. Now we're taking a video of the moon. Who's stoked out there? Raise your hands. <laughs> so let's let it get a little bit dark, darker. We'll come right back here. And we'll take a couple more pictures of the moon with it nice and dark. All right, we let it get a little darker. Still really uh, a lot of daylight out here. But man, that is an awesome freaking image with the moon. Right there, you know, zoom in here. Right about there. It's crazy, take a picture. The more you zoom in, harder is the focus. We're just adjusting our shutter speed. Zoom back out and get a full Full image of the moon here. I'm gonna adjust my little motors here because I'm not quite perfect. I didn't take the time to pull our line. Um, I just wanted to get the scope pointing north. This is good enough for taking a picture of the moon. Yeah, I'm just adjusting. Wow. So that's it. Cell phone, bracket, equatorial scope, how to set it up. And we're getting pictures of the moon on our phone. And the cool thing is, is we can uh, go in here to Facebook. Hey, there's me, and my lovely assistant, my girlfriend, Lisa. And I can say, shooting the moon. Tag Lisa, tag her friend. She's at the top. Done, shooting the moon. Photo, the latest one. Let's get this big one here.
Love that guy. Right. Shooting the moon. Post. Yeah. So this is actually a video that I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, something simple, you know, getting back to the roots, getting back to the basics of where I started and using this uh, simple telescope. You know, literally I was like, I want a better telescope and was fishing around on Amazon and bought this. Really didn't know what I was doing, um, but I'm glad I did. I've had a lot of great experiences with this telescope. Um, took a lot of great images, a lot of deep sky images with it, with a few upgrades. But even though I'm shooting some deep sky tonight with my other you know, more uh, advanced telescope, and the moon's just a bitch. It just is, it's bright and it's annoying. Um, every once in a while you gotta stop and just marvel at it uh, because we need it. We need the moon. <laughs> we can't live without it. So uh, I hope this, uh, hope this taught you something about hopefully enjoying your telescope more. And I can't stress enough, if you've bought one of these you know, mass-produced telescopes, go out and get some good eyepieces. Um, especially like uh, go to OPT, check out my affiliate link below. Check them out and get you a good 20 millimeter or a good 30 millimeter uh, inch and a quarter plossal eyepiece. It's going to really uh, be a game changer for you when you're doing some observing. So uh, until next time, clear skies, which we have, clear minds, which I think I've got, and uh, go enjoy the moon. And you want to learn to set it up right so you can take this. Okay. That's really good. I want to jump in. <laughs> I want to jump in and then you need to go fast. <laughs> okay. I want to. Let's play it back and make sure my microphone worked.